On average, drug companies spend $2.5 billion to develop a new drug such as ivermectin. Yet Merkin Company, one of the largest and most respected pharmaceutical companies in the world, has given away for free more than 3 billion doses of the drug, valued at close to $10 billion since 1987. Why? This is the story of Dr. Pindros Roy Vagelos, former CEO of Merck, who was responsible for taking a stand that resulted in this humanitarian policy, one that has helped and continues to help hundreds of millions of people every year. Dr. Roy Vagelos was born into a poor Greek immigrant family during the Depression in 1929. His dad instilled in his son a love of learning and the family ethic, you have to do things for others. Following his training as a physician, Dr. Vagelos joined Merck in 1974. By 1984, he had been promoted to CEO. It was a perfect marriage, as Merck's mission statement, People Before Profit, echoed his father's teachings. Dr. William Campbell, while working for the pharmaceutical giant Merck in the early 1970s, developed ivermectin for the treatment of parasites in livestock. In 1978, Dr. Campbell had an inkling the same drug might treat onchocerciasis, commonly known as river blindness, a parasitic infection affecting almost 100 million people in the poorest countries of the world. Dr. Campbell would go on to win the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2015 for his work on ivermectin. River blindness is spread by black flies along fast-moving rivers in Africa and Latin America. When the black fly bites a human, it injects microfilaria under the skin that develop into worms up to 18 inches in length. The worms cause severe itching and can travel to the eye where they can lead to blindness. In 1978, Dr. Campbell took his theory regarding ivermectin and river blindness to Dr. Vagelos, who was senior head of research and development at the time. I was really, really uh, on top of these diseases, including river blindness. In other words, I was giving lectures on river blindness when ivermectin was in the early stages and even before. Vagelos was impressed. And while concerned about the financial implications of developing a drug for people who could not afford to pay for it, decided in 1980 to use Merck money to fund an informal three-month trial of the drug in Senegal, Africa. It was a wonderful opportunity to do things that had to be done. Affected individuals were given a single dose of mechtism, the human version of ivermectin. At first, the residents were skeptical about taking the pill. Papa Diop was born and raised in Senegal, where river blindness is endemic. Now for those people, just like anywhere else in the world, with pro poverty comes faith. They tend to rely and put most of their, birth, their, their faith in religion. One thing with that is that anything that happens to you is as God wills it. However, once individuals reported the disappearance of the intense itching associated with the subcutaneous river blindness worms, entire villages began taking the drug with similar results. Dr. Vagelos was determined to make this miracle drug available to all who required it. However, he faced a major dilemma. A market analysis showed that all the people who, who suffer from river blindness are poor and there's no money that would be able to be used to purchase or market the, this medicine. Dr. Vagelos reached out to the World Health Organization and we hoped would partner with Merck to distribute mectizen. To his surprise, WHO refused to help distribute mectizen, convinced the drug wouldn't be effective. Determined to prove the WHO wrong, Dr. Vagelos authorized doctors Mohammed Aziz and Kenneth Brown to use all the Merck resources they required to conduct a full-scale clinical trial in Africa in 1982, which demonstrated the drug's true potential. The things were gone for nine months. It was incredible. And so we knew at the end of that one experiment that the drug would be effective using one tablet once a year. I mean, it just absolutely is incredible. The fact that it's given by mouth in little tiny pills, I mean, it's so easy to take. Dr. Vagelos again presented mechanism to the WHO. This time, the WHO proposed that as long as Merck provided the drug, the WHO would help identify means for getting mechanism to everyone who required it. Despite the drug's demonstrated success, Merck failed to find any government or agency that would pay for the drug. Many people in the government in America didn't think that money could be well spent in Africa because the money would be wasted. They, they, they didn't trust the Africans to, you know, to do a good job. Dr. Vagelos knew Merck was in a position to help millions of people, but he also had responsibilities as CEO of Merck to protect the long-term future of the company and answer to its board and shareholders. Dr. Vagelos knew the suffering, disability, and death caused by river blindness could be unfailingly altered by his team's discovery. He also knew what it was like to face suffering without a remedy at hand. While working at the Massachusetts General Hospital during the poliomyelitis epidemic in the fall of 1955, 
Dr. Vagilis would tend to patients who were lying in bed completely paralyzed, knowing that there was nothing he could do to help them. For Vagilos, people infected with river blindness were like the paralyzed people lying in the hospital, but this time he could do something to help them. It was a wonderful thing, and, and uh, it was an opportunity that doesn't come very often. In the Moral Corporation, Dr. Vagilos was quoted as saying, Mechtison was an incredible medicine that could improve the lives of millions of people. I decided Merck would give the drug free to any person endangered. There was a tense moment or two before I explained to my board why I had been willing on my own authority to commit Merck resources ad infinitum to the fight against river blindness, but the board was completely supportive. You think doing the right thing will always be okay, and, and uh, I have believed that all my life, and I have always responded in that way. I always did what I thought was right. According to the philanthropist John Moores, The problem was getting the drugs from, from the U.S. to the, the mouths at the end of the road. And that was, that was what I decided to, to try to do. In 1990, Mr. Moores founded the River Blindness Foundation, donating millions of dollars of his own money. In 1996, the Carter Center, after acquiring the resources of the River Blindness Foundation, joined many international organizations to help distribute mechanism worldwide. As a result, distribution of mechanism began for free to people from all around the world. No longer was it fate or God that decided if they would suffer and maybe die from this disease. These people gained control over their lives, their future, and the future of their societies. It was at about the same time that it was discovered that mechanism is effective against other diseases. We had discovered that another parasite was, was sensitive to ivermectin, and that was elephantiasis. But the population that's at risk is a billion rather than a hundred million. There's a goal to eliminate uh, elephantiasis by 2020. For onchocerciasis in the Americas, we've really seen the elimination of the parasite completely so that four of the six countries, it's gone now. In the lucky villages where we've been able to take the Merck medicine, they don't ever remember even about having River blindness. Furthermore, mactizin is effective against many other parasites that result in major morbidity and loss of productive activity. It's really remarkable because it's good for um, intestinal worms, it's good for scabies, a skin infection, it's good for lice. It's really a, a, a wonderful medicine. Considered a wonder drug like penicillin and aspirin, mactizin has improved the nutrition, general health, and well-being of more than 1 billion people worldwide since its discovery. In 2015, Merck treated free 250 million people. One quarter of a billion people received mectazan or ivermectin free. This would never have been possible if Dr. Roy Vagelos had not taken a stand and decided to make mectazan available for free to everyone who required it. A major accomplishment of 20th century medicine was the international immunization effort against smallpox, a result of scientific brilliance, governmental, and World Health Organization oversight. The distribution of mechanism for free may be viewed by history in a similar light. Individuals, companies, organizations, and governments have come together to benefit hundreds of millions of lives each year, in the process ushering in the age of philanthropic drug donation, culminating in the 2012 London Declaration on Neglected Tropical Diseases and the distribution of billions of doses of drugs for free each year by leading pharmaceutical companies. As stated by Mr. Morse, Hopefully what the 21st century will be about, as much as anything, is going to be getting rid of a lot of neglected tropical diseases. I'd say the key to it uh, has been the decision by Dr. Vagelos at Merck to make free medicine available. He made a big sacrifice on the part of, uh, of his own company. Dr. Vagelos saved countless lives. The quality of people's lives has gone up like crazy. He didn't have to do that. Uh, Roy Vagelos uh, is, is a hero in my book, and there are not many heroes, uh, sadly, in the world. Dr. Vagelos, in my opinion, is a hero for what he did. President Jimmy Carter views Dr. Vagelos in the same light. I've never looked back and said, gee, that was a mistake or, you know, too costly, we shouldn't have done it. Never. I mean, it was exactly the right thing. As Dr. Vagelos stated in the Moral Corporation, corporations, no less than individuals, need to be held to a high moral standard. Dr. Vagelos' decision is resulting in the eradication of debilitating diseases worldwide. Dr. Vagelos put people before profit. He did what was right for mankind, not just for Merck.